It's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another What's for Dinner where I share with you guys some of the meals my blended family of six and I had throughout the week. This week I have crock pot meals, I have some hot dogs and homemade potato salad, and I have gyozas and rice. So go on, click subscribe, stick around, and let's see what I was cooking in my kitchen this week. Alright, per usual guys, I will link any recipes down below or type out any of my personal recipes. Now, if you watched my crock pot video, I shared the Olive Garden uh, chicken pasta with you guys. I love it and so many people do, but some people are complaining because it's a little tangy and it's very strong. This Italian chicken, you guys, it's on Pinterest. Of course, you know I saw my girl Jessica O'Donoghue make it, so I had to try it. I want to say she did this about 10 months ago. Anyway, basically you're gonna wanna take your chicken breast, pour a can of a chicken or a cream of mushroom soup. You can put cream of chicken, and I'll get into that in a minute, and you're gonna wanna break up an eight ounce package of cream cheese, set it right on top with a package of just powdered Italian season mix, and I'm just gonna go ahead and salt and pepper this. Now you can cook this on high for about four hours. The thing is, the recipe does call for two cans. Now, I only put one thinking that that would be sufficient, I end up adding some milk. My recommendation to you is to go ahead and use one can of cream of chicken and one of cream of mushroom. I think that would be absolutely perfect and I'm going to make this again doing that. Now, that being said, this is not part of the recipe to go ahead and stir in some Parmesan cheese and some shredded cheese, but if you guys follow Jessica, then you know she always adds cheese to everything, so I had to follow suit. I'm gonna go ahead and mash it up using my Pampered Chef masher here. It's supposed to be used for grounding up ground beef and stuff and breaking it up, but I just find it's really good for shredding chicken, you guys. So stir it all together, add as much cheese to taste as you would like. You can see here, I did add milk because it wasn't quite creamy enough to coat an entire box of penne. Now, that being said, had I not put an entire box of cooked pasta in here, I think this would have been more than enough. So you gauge how much you need to feed your family that night. I'm not always the best at that. Now, like I said, this is absolutely delicious. It's much more mild than the Olive Garden, so I highly suggest you try this and let me know if you do. I'm telling you, this was so, so good, you guys. So next up, if you guys follow me and you would have seen these on my Costco haul, I bought these spring rolls and gyozas. Please tell me if I'm saying it wrong. I've made both before, but I haven't bought this brand of gyozas. So I'm very excited to try them out though. I will warn you, I tried a new method today and I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to try a new cooking method when I'm trying to film a video that's showing you guys recipes. But welcome to randomness and we're gonna go through this together and I love you all and please don't click off the video. Anyway, you're gonna need some flavorless oil like canola or vegetable oil for frying your gyozas and a little bit of sesame oil as well because it just gives a really nice flavor. I'm also gonna steam some rice in my foodie with a little bit of ginger. So now I have some canola oil in the base of a nonstick pan. I will also rant a little bit. I rave about this rock pan, you guys, but it is the coating on it is starting to go. So it isn't as nonstick as it was a year ago. So keep that in mind if you're considering buying one. Now, you're gonna wanna kinda line these all up in a medium to low heat. You wanna fry these, but on a lower heat. You don't wanna overdo it. This is the theory that I was attempting. So basically, uh, the idea when you're cooking a gyoza is you fry it in a little bit of oil for about four or five minutes till it gets really crispy on the bottom in about medium low heat. Again, a hot pan, but not overly heated. And then you're gonna steam it in about a half a cup of water with the lid on it after you fried them. And this is gonna soften up the tops and keep the bottoms crispy. Well, this method with cornstarch is supposed to crisp them as it steams them. Oh, 
I should add this method would have worked with more practice and had I been paying attention. Silly me sat down and tried to edit a video and thought I had 10 minutes. I did not. Anyway, some of these were salvageable, which we did, and I decided to go ahead and fry up the ones I could save. And let me tell you, go to Costco and buy these. They tasted amazing. So you're now seeing my new Gotham steel pan. Um, I got this pan because I want to bake something in the oven straight from the stovetop, and it's good up to 500 degrees. So here we go, guys, frying it up in a little bit of canola oil and sesame oil, and they still turn out amazing, like I said. And I also, like I said, steamed up some rice in my foodie. Make sure you guys are subscribed because I am posting a video this week all about five reasons why you guys need to run out and buy a Ninja Foodie for Christmas. So here we go. I've got my delicious spring rolls with some plum sauce, some nice steamed rice, and some delicious gyozas. All right, guys, I am not reinventing the wheel with this meal. Uh, I am having pan fried hot dogs with a potato salad. Now I had to cook up some eggs and some potatoes in my foodie for that Ninja Foodie video, because trust me, if you are not cooking your eggs in your pressure cooker, whether it's your Instant Pot or your foodie, you're missing out. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and make my potato salad, which is basically salt, pepper, Miracle Whip, eggs, potatoes, top it with paprika. It's super, super basic. I know some people are probably like, you're not using mayo. Well, in my opinion, mayo is basically oil and eggs, and I'm already adding a lot of eggs. And we just grew up eating Miracle Whip, so I guess every household is different. You're either butter or margarine, or Miracle Whip or mayo. I am definitely a Miracle Whip girl. Now, I also don't mash my potato salad. I like to have big, kind of rustic looking chunks, because I kind of eat it like I'm eating whole potatoes, really. Again, that's your preference. Mash it up if you want to. My mother-in-law mashes her potato salad. I absolutely love that too. You'll see here, I'm not overly particular about my eggs either. Basically, I'm just trying to cut them up because I know I'm gonna be stirring it together with a fork or something in a minute, which is gonna break them up even more. And if I do too much now, it's gonna be kind of a mashed up mess. Do you know what I mean? So now I'm gonna go ahead and squirt in, <laughs> squirt in. Doesn't that sound disgusting? My Miracle Whip. I would say I probably added about an entire cup of Miracle Whip. And I would say I had six good russet sized potatoes and six eggs. Yes, I usually put about an egg per big potato. It's just what I like. I love the egg in a potato salad. So maybe it's more egg salad or potato egg salad. I don't know. If you guys wanna add onions in this, absolutely do it. I love onions in it. Jamie absolutely detests onions in it, which is funny because he loves raw onions like on his hot dog and stuff, but he just says there's something about putting them in your potato salad that really just messes with him. So I'm gonna top it up with some paprika. I go a little bit heavy here and you guys, that's just me. I like a lot of paprika on my potato salad. And then right after this, I'm gonna go ahead and fry up my hot dogs with some buns and some butter, toast them in a frying pan, cut up some onions. You guys, this meal was actually super, super good, even though it was pretty impromptu. some processed cheese on it and I love everything on my hot dog you guys ketchup mustard relish onions if I had other things I probably would have thrown that on there too but this was it topped it with green onions just because I had them in the fridge potato salad hot dogs I felt like summer except it's like five degrees here guys it ain't summer but this meal was definitely what I needed oh, 
All right, this meal I am super pumped to share with you guys. I am making Fallon from Moss Family TV's Buttermilk Biscuits. I will link the recipe and her video down below. Now, I make tea biscuits. I have shared them on my channel, and I always say they're pretty foolproof, but guys, these are foolproof and amazing. I'm mixing all of my dry ingredients together, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut my butter, which I put in the freezer for about 20 minutes, so it'd be nice and firm and cold. I'm actually going to cut it with a paring knife and drop it into the flour. Now, one of the tricks that Fallon mentions is to go ahead and cut it into thin little uh, kind of like squares and then dip it in the flour and then pick it up and cut it into pieces. I guess it helps uh, prevent the butter from melting in your hands and just kind of gets it all incorporated with the butter. So I found this super easy, you guys, super flawless. <laughs> it was actually, I don't know, sorry mom, that I'm gonna go back to my other biscuits. I really don't, though I will say it is two totally different biscuits. These are so full of butter. They have a much stronger taste and that's from the butter milk but it's a good thing but I will say my daughter wasn't a big fan she does prefer just a more basic tea biscuit I guess so all I'm doing here is I poured the buttermilk in and she says you got to get in there with your hands because you've got to feel it and it's like that with anything you guys any dough you really it is kind of a feel and depending where you live and the humidity and the time of year you might need a whole cup of buttermilk or you might need three quarters of a cup. I actually probably left about three tablespoons that I didn't end up using. And can you see those whole chunks of butter in there? Like I'm telling you, these were so, so, so stinking good. So basically you're kind of going for a kind of sticky texture, but you don't want it so stuck to your hands that you can't work with it because we are gonna dump um, some more flour into the corner of the bowl to roll and press our tea biscuits into, which you're about to see in a minute. So you're gonna take a chunk, however big you want your biscuit to be, roll it between the palms of your hands and dip it in the flour and press it down into a biscuit shape or whatever shape you guys are gonna wanna have it in and then put it in your pan. Now the other thing that she does say is it's important for your biscuits to touch because I guess having them all together just kind of creates a more softer, tender biscuit, and I have to agree. Here we are, a cold December night. First of all, yes, I have snuck some Christmas music in here. You're welcome, or I'm sorry. I don't know, it depends on you. Also, Fallon says that in order to make this a traditional Southern biscuit, you gotta push your three fingers in there. So you see I'm doing it. All you Southern girls out there and mamas, please let me know if I'm doing a good job here. I still remember how I used to feel. Look at us now. And now I literally went step by step as Fallon told me to and she says set a timer for eight minutes check them again it depends on your oven and the doneness that you want them to but I could see the butter like literally sizzling on the bottom of the pan it was very exciting you guys mine took about 18 minutes exactly till I got them that brownness on top and then I'm just gonna go ahead and rub some butter just like Fallon did confession is that these actually turned out much much better than I had expected them to and I was pretty stinking pleased with myself so now that I was done my biscuits I had to go ahead and make my chicken ala king aka chicken pot pie filling which is what I'm doing and you guys have seen me make this literally probably 10 times on my channel so I will link the recipe that I use below it is foolproof perfect it's a homemade seasoning salt literally you guys everything about this is delicious and I would never open another can of cream of chicken to make pot pie again unless you like that then go for it <laughs> but all I'm doing is making a roux out of some flour and some chicken stock and some butter onions gonna add a little bit of milk in there let it thicken for a couple minutes you guys this comes together in under five minutes it is so so easy once it's thickened and it starts to bubble up a little bit remove it from the heat excuse me after you've added your seasonings and then you're gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat add whatever frozen vegetables you want and some cut up chicken and it's really that simple. I know that seems maybe a little too easy, but it is that easy. But what I swear makes this pot pie is 
the seasoned salt that I use. Now this is a crouton cracker jack pot pie. I will leave it below. Like I said, I always use this one. I don't use a lot of uh, recipes verbatim. This one I do, you guys. So I basically, I took his recipe here and cut it down by like a quarter, just because there was only two of us eating on this day. We do it in a very Christmas way. guys just like that you have a pot pie filling you can throw this on some toast on a tea biscuit which is what we're doing here or like I said inside a pre-made pie filling or pie shell and you have pot pie and I, this is what I use when I make my freezer meals for chicken pot pie you could get this little tart shells and make little individual pot pies I don't know I'm obsessed with pot pie okay it's the last time I'm gonna say it but here it was guys chicken and the king on homemade buttermilk biscuits this was a week you guys we ate well and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and please come back next week because I've got some more exciting meals to share with you guys bye for now